Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech, and I'm currently teaching a class called Guitar Amplification and Effects. As a result, to prepare for various aspects of this class, I've been reading a lot about guitars, amplifiers, and effects, and I've been watching a lot of videos about guitars and amplifiers and effects. One of my favorite YouTubers, fellow Atlanta resident Rhett Schull, recently made a video about a vintage Gibson SG he purchased from Lindsay down at one of my favorite music stores, Maple Street Guitars. Rhett said some things in the video that echo things that I've heard people say and write about guitars for decades now, and matched some things that I've experienced myself. And what I want to try to do in this video is square some of these concepts with what we know about the actual physics about how electric guitars work. Rhett also goes through a couple of other guitars in his collection that he considers to be great guitars. And for all of the guitars, he spends a lot of time emphasizing the importance of how resonant the guitar feels. This is one of the best guitars I've ever, certainly ever owned and certainly ever played. And the first thing that comes to mind is the resonance. We hear, we talk about this all the time with guitars, with really great guitars, is how loud they are unplugged acoustically, even solid body electric guitars. This goes for acoustics as well. Same thing for basses. Any great instrument, no matter its construction, no matter its price range, uh, no matter what, what type of wood it's made of, whether it's a bolt neck or a set neck, every great guitar that I've ever played has always been super resonant. And this guitar is no exception. When I hold the neck down here, first of all, listen to how loud it is, right? It's often said that if an electric guitar sounds good acoustically, then it will sound good electrically. That's obviously not necessarily true because if you put terrible pickups in a guitar, then it's not going to sound good no matter what it sounds like acoustically. But let's reverse the implication. If a guitar sounds good electrically, does that necessarily imply that it sounds good acoustically? Are there electric guitars that sound mediocre acoustically that sound great electrically? And if so, what's the physical reason why? I have a feeling that people have the impression that an electric guitar should sound good acoustically, so then the electromagnetic pickups have a good source to deal with. But the problem is that reasoning only applies to microphones that are taking acoustic energy and turning that acoustic energy into electric energy. If you are recording a piano with a pair of Coles 4038s, or if you're recording a vocalist with a Neumann U87, you want your piano and your vocalist to sound good in the room. But a properly operating electromagnetic pickup is not a microphone. It does not turn acoustic energy into electrical energy. It detects the disturbance in the magnetic field created by the motion of the string. The electromagnetic pickup does not care what the guitar sounds like to your ear 5, 10, or 15 inches away from the guitar. It doesn't even care what the string sounds like acoustically a quarter inch away from the strings. It does not care about vibrations in the neck. It does not care about vibrations in the body. It only cares about what's happening with the strings in the immediate vicinity around the pickup. So, vibrations in the neck and the body, to the extent that they do matter, matter only to the extent that they affect the way the string itself is vibrating. And I should clarify, matter in terms of the electrical signal sent to the amp or whatever the first pedal in your chain is or whatever. I'll come back to that point. So let's imagine playing guitar on the moon. You could imagine a case where you have no atmosphere to conduct your acoustic waves. And you could also imagine taking a string and affixing it to two super stationary, super heavy, super unmovable points. So this is a theoretical physics thing. And then you strike the string or you pluck the string. In some way, you put energy into the string. To get maximum sustain, as guitar players love, you would want to keep the energy within the string and let the electromagnetic pickup detect the motion. 
No, we have to actually build a practical guitar if we want to hold something to play. So we need a neck and we need a body, and the neck needs to be hooked to the body. And the neck is connected to the strings through the nut, and the body is connected to the strings through the bridge. So energy is going to leave the strings and be conducted into the neck and the body through the nut and the bridge. And depending on the particular qualities of the nut and the bridge, and the particular qualities and shape of the neck and the body, the neck and the body will vibrate. But the energy and the vibrations in the neck and the body is not energy that's in the string anymore. It's not energy that the pickup is picking up. So, to the extent that the guitar player on the moon is feeling the neck or the body vibrate. Well, that's energy that's not contributing to the actual sustain of the tone picked up by the pickup anymore. Now, let's take our guitar back to Earth for a minute and think about acoustic guitars. So we don't have this magical electromagnetic pickup anymore. If we have a situation where we have all of the energy in the string, well, we might have great sustain, but that energy is staying in the string. To make an acoustic guitar be meaningful as an acoustic guitar, we have to remove energy from the string and put it into the guitar body and the body of air inside the guitar body in order to actually convert that energy in the string into a nice acoustic wave that can spread out to the listener in the room. So, in an abstract sense, having the nice acoustic guitar body actually decreases the sustain of the waveform in the string, but having a string that rings forever doesn't matter if there's not a mechanism to actually hear that nice sustain in the string. And this is why it seems to be a contradiction to say a guitar that is extremely resonant in the sense of feeling the neck and the body vibrate has wonderful sustain. If you really wanted it to have wonderful sustain as picked up by the pickup, you would want to keep the energy out of the body and the neck and keep it in the string. And there also seems to be a contradiction between the notion that a light resonant body has great sustain when you will also hear people say things like, oh, this body is made of this really dense wood and it's a really big body that's very heavy and so it's going to have great sustain. And it feels a little weird to talk about the feeling of the vibrating guitar body when the entire point of solid body guitars, the reason they were invented was to not resonate because players were having problems with feedback. So, how can we refine our thinking about this? For me, the light bulb went off when Rhett said this about a guitar that he didn't bond with. I sat down with it before I even turned on the amp and I went like, and it just didn't ring. It was dead. It was mm. just not there. And as a result, it felt like I was having to, when I was playing it, I was really having to work with the guitar and it wasn't an enjoyable experience. It was a kind of, it felt like I was having to pull the notes out of the guitar. If that's the best way I can describe it. it was yeah. Like, like there's no, there, it's not really giving you the feedback you're looking for. Yeah. It's, like, it's acting more like a sponge. It's mm -hmm. everything I'm putting into it. It's just kind of soaking up and it's not giving me anything back. That is such a good way to put it. Yeah. This is like a mirror. It's like everything you put in, it's, it just reflects back to you and amplifies. This is kind of a heady analogy, but it works in, in my brain. Um, this guitar, they're both SGs. They're both made of mahogany. They're both built with the same body construction, albeit they had a completely different pickup layout and a different bridge, so they're not objectively, you can't really compare the two. But two SGs, um, one, both were very nice guitars, both were very well-built instruments. I think in that case, it just came down to the piece of mahogany, it came down to the piece of wood. And that custom shop, while it was a beautiful guitar, just, it felt dead. And everything you put into it, it the, the, the sustain wasn't quite there. It just, and objectively, if you were a listener, it probably sounded great. Yeah. But, but as a player and the way it made me feel when I was playing it, it just didn't compare to this guitar. I want to play that last part again. And objectively, if you were a listener, it probably sounded great. Yeah. But, but as a player and the way it made me feel when I was playing it, it just didn't compare to this guitar.
I think what we're circling in on is that a musical instrument is not just a physical device for making sound. It's also a user interface for the musician. Let's listen to Rhett talk about the neck on his SG. If I hold my neck down here, or if I hold the, yeah, it down in like the first position, the entire neck is just resonating. It feels like you're, no matter where you're holding the body, this guitar absolutely rings like a bell. The vibration of the neck is providing Rhett with important haptic feedback. People have often noted that your perception of how a given guitar sounds can be affected by how it looks. This is called hearing with your eyes. On a more visceral level, I think that playing a musical instrument and listening to a musical instrument are fundamentally different things. A guitar player is hearing with their hands in a way they might not be consciously aware of. Their brain is correlating what their ears are picking up with the vibrations that their hands are feeling. So feeling the neck and the body vibrate may help the guitar player feel more in touch with the instrument, enabling them to get better tone, as guitar players like to call it, out of the instrument. So there are a couple situations where the vibration of the body might be picked up by the pickup, but they're kind of edge cases, but we should probably talk about them a little bit. One is if your pickups are microphonic. Now, it's generally considered bad if your pickups are microphonic. You can't really design a pickup to be microphonic in a controlled way on purpose. In a microphonic pickup, the coil of wire can rattle around relative to the magnet. So either the coil can rattle, or the magnet can rattle, or both can rattle, or maybe neither rattles, but the pole pieces are rattling. Anyway, stuff is rattling around in a way that's not terribly predictable and usually not desirable. It usually gives you horrible squealy feedback, and it's not something anybody wants usually. So people will use things like wax potting to try to keep everything in place. The other area where the body may become more relevant, although still indirectly, is through feedback either in the Jimi Hendrix sense with a giant Marshall stack where the sound from the speakers vibrates perhaps both the strings on the guitar directly and also the guitar body, or perhaps even through something like studio monitors. It doesn't necessarily have to be a Marshall stack, although it is more fun that way. If you're looking for that kind of feedback, I imagine that a body that is more naturally resonant is something that you would want.